Today on BRCV Tank Trials ULM Edition, it's episode three with sump selection for all three different tank styles with a free somatic sump and skimmer package at the end. I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV's Tank Trials ULM Edition. Tank Trials is all about taking everything the BRS team and reefing community knows about a very specific approach to reefing, implementing that knowledge, tracking the progress, and exploring the results. This is week three of ULM and development of an ultra-low maintenance system. The goal is a stable, show caliber reef tank which requires as little maintenance as possible, potentially performing only a few minutes of maintenance a month. Today is all about sump selection for these three tanks. We're going to explore and potentially select three different sums for the ULM project, one polyp and softy tank, one LPS, and one SPS tank. That means we'll develop some criteria for what ULM means in relation to sumps, discuss the available options, what the reefing community shared this week, and then make our selection. So what does low maintenance mean in relation to sumps? Large enough to be stable. Has room for important ULM equipment inside the sump as well as inside the cabinet. Easy to clean, easy to plumb, safe, reliable plumbing methods. Does it work with specific reefing methods? And honestly questioning if we even need a sump at all on some of these tanks. Starting with sump size, one of the challenges with the 60 gallon tanks we selected is there isn't a tremendous amount of room to work with inside the square cabinet and the doorway is somewhat narrow. This is about the time where you might start to second guess yourself, should we have gone with that 40 gallon breeder or any one of the Red Sea options, if only because the stands are so tall and the cabinet doors open wide without the braces in the center. That feeling's totally normal, but in the end, the 60 gallon cubes and three totally different system types next to each other is going to make a pretty stunning combined display. So today we're going to work with this sump challenge and still achieve or exceed all of our goals. So what exactly is the space challenge? Well, most of the popular sump sizes are either 18 or 20 inch cubes, which leaves very little room for external equipment or the electrical inside the cabinet area. Some of the other good options are also 24 inches long, which is just a hair too long to fit inside the cabinet. The rest of the smaller options either don't hold much water or won't accommodate pieces of equipment common to a low maintenance system. This is a good time to reflect on what type of equipment that you're going to run. Do you want to run a filter sock or roller mat? Because if you don't need filter socks, a design that doesn't incorporate them is ideal since there won't be any wasted space or cost. If you want a more automated solution in this tight space with something like the roller mat, the sump is going to have to be tiny. That said, I don't know if I've ever met anyone who has their system set up the exact same way now as they set it up. Equipment changes and upgrades are an inevitable component of any hobby and definitely this one. So a sump design that can accommodate what you want now as well as leaving room for the future is ideal. In relation to low maintenance, easy to clean is as important as well, meaning all those tiny components and add-on function sumps come with these days are cool, I would still assume that they're more maintenance as well. I think a good rule of thumb is the more complex a sump is, the more maintenance it will be. I'd also look for things like spacing between the baffles, areas which are physically impossible to clean without emptying the sump, and components which need to be cleaned frequently to function properly like sponges. A low maintenance sump also needs a plumbing option that doesn't need to be tweaked constantly and safe. This has historically been the bean animal style overflow, which has a full siphon drain, a drain for a subtle amount of excess, and an emergency. Fact is, none of the sumps that we're going to look at today will accommodate that out of the box, so we'll have to review how easy they will be to modify. You also need to consider sump design if you're planning a very low maintenance specific reefing method like Triton. Triton has a preferred layout, flow requirements, and most notably requirements for the fuge that's at least 10% of the system water volume. I personally consider Triton a ULM method, but we're already running Triton on the BRS 160 and sharing the results of that so we don't plan on doing that again with any of these tanks. And of course the last piece of all this, do you even need a sump? The most basic answer to that question is no, and anyone who says otherwise is just wrong. There are too many awesome sumpless tanks out there to even question this. More or less a sump just allows you to hide all the equipment in the cabinet rather than in the tank or hanging on the back of the tank. The sump also adds system water volume and allows you to use more and better equipment, so there's tons of advantages here. For what it's worth, I think no sump can absolutely be one of the lowest maintenance designs out there. Okay, so what did the community share in relation to sump design and selection for a ULM? 
Joe Kelly on YouTube shared, the Skims UP21 sump is perfect fit for your tank. Would love to see that with a hang on back or a circulating protein skimmer and use the skimmer area as a fuge and do a small Triton method tank. I gotta say, I just wasn't thinking external skimmer until I read this post, but that absolutely opens all kinds of options on use of space. We want the best and lowest maintenance filtration possible for these tanks, but there's no way around it. We are space restricted here, so the alternative designs like an external skimmer are wise to consider. Navy Tom, when I was building my ULM tank, I was looking at the same 60 gallon cube. I ultimately went with the Mr. Aqua 48 gallon three foot tank due to needing room to add a roller mat, which has been a godsend for my ULM tank. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that a roller mat just isn't going inside this cabinet, and it's a shame because it's obviously 100 times lower maintenance than manually swapping out filter socks. Zarek Boken shared, I believe a refugium is required for a ULM because it'll give you a spot to culture copepods, which eat detritus. You can keep macroalgaes, which will help with excess nitrates, and it gives more space for live bacteria, which will help stability. I have to agree, and at this point, it's hard for me to imagine a system design that doesn't incorporate some type of biological filtration like this, just because it's so simple and effective. I also believe a healthy microfauna population is likely a component of what keeps even the beginnings of algae at bay in the display. T. Suro, I hope it is low maintenance, because having one small door really sucks. Had one before, not fun. He's absolutely right. The small door is one of the biggest challenges in front of us in terms of a low maintenance sump selection. Part of the reason we selected this stand rather than buying something custom is because we felt it was a bit more valuable to explore some of the options, which come at a price point more reefers will find realistic. The Red Sea tank packages come with an awesome stand from this perspective because they have the widest door opening possible. Discus pad, I think the trigger system's ruby would be the best fit. The inlet and filter sock holder don't take up as much room as the Emerald series. It has a large refugium area for a refugium to keep the nutrients down and a large return pump chamber. The already incorporated refugium and large water volume absolutely make this option attractive. Over on Reef to Reef, D. Mayer shared, I overhauled my sump to allow as big of a refugium as possible and bought a Kessel H380 to light it. I think more and more reefers are transitioning to a properly designed and lit refugium as a primary nutrient export method. Garrett Elliott said, trigger cube or somatic modular, space saving, yet can still be cleaned quite easily. Any sump with spaces in it your hand can't fit in makes that moment when you do need to do maintenance or clean all the more unenjoyable. I couldn't agree more, open design is best. RT Party shared some significant dissatisfaction with the two foot cube design on a few fronts, but most pertinent to today, sump selection just became very limited without going custom. Most cube sumps I look at make you compromise somewhere or leave something to be desired. Trigger seems to be the best bet and the way I may go someday. And last but not least, Rip Van Winkle had some very insightful comments and likely the longest post of the thread. If you're looking for a direction that challenges common thought, I'd check out his post because it's interesting for sure. So these are the options that we seriously considered. There are other options out there, but I think that this will cover about 80% of what most people would use in this case. Starting with a do-it-yourself sump made out of a standard glass aquarium where you could just glue in your own baffle system, which is pretty easy. With a standard rectangular aquarium, a 16 gallon high is about as big as we're gonna be able to fit in there at 20 inches long, 10 inches deep, and 18 inches high. I have to say only 10 inches wide, this is just too small to house many types of the equipment that we're likely going to use. If you're willing to put in just a bit of extra work, a 20 gallon high is also an option at 24 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 16 inches tall. This is both longer and wider, but the 24 inches exceeds the max length of 22 and a half inches of cabinet space by an inch and a half. That means the edge is gonna hang off the back, but you can use some plywood and a support underneath to extend the shelf and properly support the sump with just a tiny bit of effort. The 20 gallon high is a pretty attractive option to me, particularly because at 12 inches wide, it's gonna be one of the only options that can be removed through the doorway of the Ventura cabinet, meaning you don't have to drain the tank for major maintenance on the sump. If that's not important to you, the 25 gallon Mr. Aqua 18 inch cube is another option for a do-it-yourself sump under a tank like this. We looked at the skims options with the UP14, 18, 21, and 22 as well. I think this is a good point to share that I'm almost certain that we're gonna incorporate some form of natural biological filtration like a future scrubber. And I'm currently on the fence as related to filter socks. I won't use filter socks as a nutrient export method, but I might remove some of the floating particulate matter from the water and increase water clarity. I also think that we'll have a skimmer, so we should plan for some of this. 
In that spirit, while skims provide some very nice looking and lower cost sumps, most of these smaller designs are just not designed for a fuge, so they require some customization or potentially an external skimmer to make them work. I will say the UP22 is very tempting because at 22 inches long, 12 inches deep, and 15 inches high, it's the only sump that we'll look at today that fits lengthwise in the sump area and fits through the front door of the cabinet, which is important because there are some areas which look somewhat difficult to clean. We of course looked at the trigger sumps with the 20 sapphire and the 18 crystal. The nice thing about both these options is both the 18 and 20 inch square designs will fit inside the cabinet without customizations and they both have a fuge area built into the design which is obviously ideal. They also hold a lot more water than the other options which adds to stability but because of that the 18 or 20 inch square is basically going to fill the 22 and a half inch square cabinet that we have. That will leave us with only two to four inches of space inside the cabinet for anything else. So there needs to be minimal additional equipment or it's going to need to be mounted externally from the cabinet. I will say the trigger sump design is clean, simple, and does what it's intended to do. Simple very often means easy to clean and maintain, and I think that's the case here. So in some ways ideal out of the box, but still a challenge as concerned to leftover space in the cabinet. We also looked at the fairly new somatic line which is built by Vertex. This one's very unique in that it's not only amongst the cheapest options out there for a sump, but also comes with a CJ pump driven skimmer, which makes it one of the more obvious choices for reefers on a budget. However, knowing that it's a ridiculous deal, I wouldn't expect it to have a lot of bells and whistles because it's a pretty blank canvas of a sump. They do have accessories like filter sock holders, probe and dosing line holders available separately. There are two options which will fit inside our cabinet, the Somatic 60 and the Somatic 90. The 60 is, as you might have imagined, designed specifically for a 60 cube like this one. More or less just 16 and a half inch square that has a drain compartment and then a main sump area. The drain area on the side could double as a small three and three quarters by 10 inch square fuge area. Not huge, but could be functional. The 16 inch area leaves us with six and a half inches on either side for additional equipment. Somatic 90 comes with a larger skimmer, a more traditional rectangular design, which is 24 inches long, almost 15 inches wide, and 15 inches high. This is another case where it's slightly larger than the 22 and a half inch space we have, so we might have to use some plywood and a support to extend the shelf out an inch and a half in the back. However, if you do this, the sump is only 15 inches wide, so there's a total of seven by 22 and a half inches of space on the side for other equipment in the cabinet. Again, the sump is simple, just three compartments with a drain area, a skimmer area, and a return pump area. The drain area is pretty large because it's designed for a seven inch filter sock and alternatively can very likely be used as a fuge as well. Again, the simplicity of the sump design is also what's going to make it easy to clean and maintain. Any standard siphon or even pump or hose can clean out all the detritus because there's no small hard to reach areas of the sump. So the last option worth discussing is just no sump at all. I think the polyp and softy tank and maybe even the LPS tank could very well be run with just a properly lit hang on fuge as a primary filtration and just skip the sump altogether, which I think positions a tank to absolutely be ultra low maintenance from an equipment perspective. That said, there are going to be cords, probes, or dosing, or top-off lines all over the place, as well as hang-on equipment on the back, which most reefers will agree is pretty ugly. That said, I think Donovan on Reef to Reef had a particularly insightful comment last week. I've been running a low-maintenance mixed reef for more than two years now. I learned along the way that after maturity, I can slowly remove certain equipment and routine maintenance. It took almost two years for me to end up with a very simple setup. This is absolutely an accurate and healthy approach. A robust tank with livestock that uptakes nutrients, healthy microfauna population, healthy core line coverage, and in general, stability with a two-year tank just doesn't necessarily require the same level of effort or equipment that a brand new tank requires. I also like how responsibly this was stated. It's thrown around a lot how my tank or that person's tank does awesome with ridiculously high nutrients, no water changes, and in general limited maintenance. The missing component of this conversation is that's often a lot easier to do in a two, three, or five year old tank than a brand new one. So that said, it's possible that we could put some filtration like a hang on fuge on the softy and polyp tank and then in a couple years down the road when almost every surface is covered in coralline, the large fast growing corals uptake excess nutrients on their own and there's a healthy microfauna population, you could ultimately take the hang on fuge off and have one of the simplest tanks out there. Potentially hiding the heater and probes inside a vented acrylic box of some sort so it's attractive as well. In the end, a sump isn't an absolute requirement, it just has some advantages. Okay, so which one do we select for each tank? 
I'm going to approach this somewhat differently for each tank type based on the corals that we're keeping in the tanks. I'm also going to pick three different options because this is half about doing our best at selecting the best available option for our ULM, but also sharing legit experiences with all of you and really exploring the successes as well as the challenges. Starting with the SPS tank, water volume and stability, ability to clean and hold desired equipment are the priorities and I'm reasonably sure that I'm going to need some amount of space in the cabinet for equipment on an SPS tank. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Skims UP22. Number one reason is because at 12 inches wide it can still be removed through the front door for maintenance. At 22 inches long it also fits inside the cabinet without modifications. The UP22 also has almost a square foot of area in the main chamber, which I think is going to be adequate for use as a refugium if desired, and we can run an external skimmer which allows a lot of flexibility on placement. To be frank, the recirculating design that many external skimmers have just performs better because the foam head and water level is stable. You can adjust the contact time and the bubble pump doesn't have to fight the head pressure in the same way. When not required, SPS tanks in general benefit from using some of the best filtration options available. On the LPS tank, water volume isn't as big of an issue because LPS corals don't consume elements as rapidly and changes are slower. We probably also don't need the cutting edge filtration technology to be successful, but to stay true to ULMs, it needs to be easy to clean. We're going to go with the Somatic 90 and since it's a couple inches longer than our stand, we'll build out that simple couple inch ledge on the back with just a sheet of plywood and a block of wood the same height as the ledge painted black. The Somatic simple design is going to be one of the easiest to clean options, simple, flexible, and leaves me with enough cabinet space for other equipment common to an LPS tank. Honestly, I was somewhat tempted to use the somatic sumps on each of the tanks. If we do use the large drain area for the refugium, we may need to add an adjustment to the baffle to keep the Cato in place. Again, this is just an ultra low cost, likely lowest cost sump skimmer combo out there, so there are just few bells and whistles. And for the softy and polyp tank, there should be very little impact on water chemistry because there's so little uptake with corals like this. And the 10 gallon difference between sump sizes will make very little difference. Main reason I'm running a sump here is just because I want to hide the gear down below. And because of that, I'm going to select a sump based on one factor. It's easy to maintenance. Can I remove it at the front door for easy cleaning? And does it have simple, easy to clean and accessible compartments? So we selected the 20 gallon high standard aquarium with a few do-it-yourself acrylic baffles siliconed in place. One thing to note here is the silicone adheres to the glass very well, but the bond with acrylic is really weak. More or less, you can flick it off with your finger. That means that you should use a pretty thick bead, and the silicone is more or less just wedging the baffles in place. You can use glass baffles as well, but getting the exact right size and protecting the silicone seals can be a challenge. You can get cheap pieces of acrylic at a big box store like Home Depot, score it, and snap it to the size you need. Sandpaper can dull the edges so you don't cut yourself. I'm going to hold off on building it out until we know the exact components of filtration that we're going to use. So now that we have our sumps, it's time to make some real choices for ULM filtration next week. We're talking ultra low maintenance, just a handful of minutes of maintenance a month. What kind of filtration choices would you make? Nitrate reactor, bio pellets, carbon dosing solution, refugium, algae scrubber. Would you use a filter sock or a roller mat? Does ozone or UV filtration have a place in this? Sponge filters, biomedia like marine pure. Would any of your choices be any different between the three different tank types? So if you want one of these somatic sump packages for free, hit that link that just showed up in the description or head on over to the site, hit sales and deals, then free stuff to enter to win one this week. And if you like what we do here, let us know with that thumbs up button and subscribe because we release new reefing videos all week long. See you next week with another episode of Beerus TV Chain Trials, ULM Edition.